Hey guys, in my latest blog post, I'm talking about the uh, Scotch Big Report of 1806, and uh, I talk about historical malting. So uh, I thought I would try a little experiment of my own, and uh, what I have here are two batches of the same barley. So it's a Maris Otter barley that I grew last year, and it's all that I have left. I wish I could do more, but this is it. <clears throat> so I'm going to make two small batches of beer two gallons each. I've got an unaerated steep uh, happening in this container and then I have a normal aerated steep in this one. If you haven't read the blog post, um, what's significant about it is that their uh, steep times and germination times and temperatures were all recorded. It's probably one of the first scientific studies of malting ever done on a really large scale. So uh, what I found really interesting was these really long, steep times where they would only change the water once or twice. So anywhere from 40 hours, which was required by law, you couldn't steep for under 40 hours, all the way up to 116 hours. And uh, this sort of went against everything I knew about steeping. And uh, I always assumed that if you steep for that long, the grain would just die, would suffocate. But what I found out was that uh, you have to steep that long in order to stifle the grain a little bit and to delay the germination. Um, you always read about historically germination times being 14 to 14 days to three weeks and I always wondered how they did that. Um, I thought maybe that they were just drying the grain out or but every time I tried to do it I couldn't I couldn't go beyond eight days without the grain actually overgrowing. So uh, with this evidence in mind, um, I dug a little deeper and found out that the grain doesn't die, but um, the growth is delayed. So <clears throat> the grain won't start chitting, so the roots won't even come out until four days after the steep, if it's an unaerated steep. Um, if you're doing an aerated steep, which is used commonly today, the grain will start chitting even before you're done steeping. So it's it's a lot faster and the growth is a lot faster. So basically you can't do these 14 day germinations with an aerated steep. Um, the only way you can do these long uh, floor malting germinations are with uh, an unaerated steep. So, uh, well, that's the theory, and I'm going to try and prove that with this little experiment here. Okay, here's the aerated barley. Uh, it's just come out of its last steep. It uh, went through four steeps, and uh, three of those were at eight hours. The last one was 12 hours. I let it go a little bit longer, just by accident. And uh, <clears throat> so the moisture content, a little bit higher than I had hoped. So I'm at 45.5% right now. You can actually see it starting to chit. The roots are coming out. And if I do this squeeze test, take the barley from end to end, I should be able to squeeze it, and I can. It, uh, it's soft enough to be crushed by my fingers. And here is the unaerated barley it's on day three. It hasn't quite reached 72 hours yet. Um, I've changed the water once and I've kept it quite cold. It's been around between 5 degrees and 10 degrees Celsius or around 40 to 50 Fahrenheit, I think. And uh, there's no cheating happening. And when I go to crush one of the barley seeds, it's a little bit harder to do. Although it is possible, it does crush. Um, it's a little bit harder than the aerated stuff. So what I'm going to do, it's uh, about 11 o'clock right now. I'm going to give it to about 3 o'clock and that's going to be the 72 hour mark. And at that point I'm going to drain it and weigh it and uh, see what moisture content it's at. Alright, and look at that. I'm at 7 pounds and 2 ounces and that's exactly what the other batch weighed uh, after the four steeps 
So I'm at the same moisture content, which is pretty awesome. So I'm gonna have a, a pretty consistent side-by-side -side comparison as to uh, how these grains are going to germinate and um, you know what the end result is gonna be once I brew with them. So very cool. Uh, doesn't smell bad at all, and there's zero evidence of any chitting going on. I don't see any roots at all. And, uh, you know, after the 72 hours, I did the squeeze technique, and it felt more like the other batch. So, you know, it's kind of hard to squeeze them, because they're a little bit slippery. But, uh, once you do, it just basically crushes into a little ball. So at this stage uh, the malt would go into a couch uh, that would be about 16 inches deep or 16 to 18 I believe and uh, this is where it would be measured by the tax collector and uh, they would have to pay a certain amount of uh, duty on it. So this would usually sit in a couch for about uh, 26 hours um, so I'm going to do that, uh, maybe put it in uh, some kind of container that would be uh, a little bit deeper and I'm just going to leave it undisturbed for another day. Okay, now according to the Scotch Big Report, the temperature in the couch wouldn't rise more than 10 degrees. So 10 degrees was the average temperature increase during the couch. It also mentioned at the 96 hour mark, after, what's that four days uh, from today the uh, grain would start to sweat and that's when I'm expecting to see some chitting happening and another increase in temperature as well so I might have to watch it at that point to see if it doesn't get too hot this has been couching for uh, 26 hours now I put it in here just to sort of mimic the conditions of a deeper bed uh, this is only 10 inches. Uh, couch back then would have been uh, more like 16 inches, like up that high. Um, we're at 51 degrees. The aerated grains are really chitting nicely. Got a great germination rate. Looks like they're all, looks like all the roots are coming out. That looks really good. The surface of the uh, couched malt here is a little bit dry. But if you just go underneath, it's really quite wet. Um, so I'm going to pour this out. So now I'm going to leave them like this and turn them every so often. So the ambient temperature out here is about 45 degrees, 44.8. And uh, in the couch it was 51, so a good 6 degrees warmer. Now the temperature of the aerated malt is fluctuating quite a bit because I just stirred it up, but it's about 51 and a half degrees right now. Hey guys, so we're nearing the end of day four for the unaerated malt, and this is the start of day five for the aerated stuff. And there's a huge difference. Uh, basically, the unaerated malt is uh, is uh, going along exactly how it's described in the report in 1806. Uh, but I did notice some chitting happening on day two, but it's just today, uh, near the end of day four, that I'm actually seeing the roots starting to form. So uh, before that, it was just, you know, little rootlets emerging as a little white dot, like, say, this one. I've been keeping it very cold, so actually this probably would be a little bit further along. The acrospires in the aerated uh, barley are about half the length of the grain. I've been keeping it around uh, 50 degrees in the garage, so normally I'd germinate a little bit warmer. The acrospires would be a little bit farther along for this one. I haven't seen any evidence of sweating yet, maybe just a little bit of condensation on day two. Right now, the grain is pretty much dry to the touch. Let's see if we can zoom in here, get some close-ups. There, maybe now you can see a little bit more of a difference. Not 
quite a bit of root growth happening on this one and it's just starting on the unaerated stuff hey guys so it's day six and the aerated malt is pretty much ready to go the acra spires are quite long they're four-fifths the length of the grain on average um, the roots are kind of withered they're quite short just because of the uh, cold temperatures that I've been malting at and the air has been pretty dry so um, they're not as long as they normally would be uh, the unaerated malt uh, is coming along nicely the roots look a lot fresher because they've just started coming out um, the acra spires are only about a quarter of the length of the grain I've been doing the rub test on the aerated stuff and uh, it's coming out very soft very chalky so it's ready to go into the kiln okay for this one I'm going to keep the temperature at around 35 um, to dry it out okay it's been in here for 24 hours now at about 40 degrees I did end up turning the fan on for about four hours at the beginning there just because I didn't want the grain to over modify I was a little worried it was going to just keep growing so I wanted to dry it fast at first so I ended up turning the fan on and uh, actually I'm gonna weigh it first and uh, if I'm below 10% then I'm gonna put it in the oven to cure at 185 okay it's the end of day 11 start of day 12 we have the acro spires are about three quarters of the length of the grain the roots are very withered you can barely see them but they're there um, the temperature in the garage has been about 45 to 50 degrees and the temperature of the bed has kind of steadily remained a couple of degrees higher than the ambient temperature just trying to break one open here so you can see the acrospire it's most of the other grains I've opened were three quarters actually this looks like three quarters too actually if you look at it seems a lot more consistent that way with this longer germination the grains uh, the acro spires are all pretty much the same length as opposed to uh, the other germination there's a lot of variance there a lot more so so I didn't notice a re-hardening of the inside like the Encyclopedia Britannica said basically from day six or seven on it's just been very soft and chalky on the inside so we're on the end of day 12 here going into day 13 and it's feeling quite dry so I weighed it and we're at 38 uh, percent fair drop from the 45.5 percent we started at so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray it with a little water and see if I can perk it up a little bit to uh, get it growing again. I don't think it's going to hurt it at all. It's cold enough outside. The temperature's still around 45, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I don't think a little water would cause any mold issues. You see this guy, look at the roots on that are a little more perky compared to this sad little kernel here the roots are turning all brown so why not give it a try now this was done by maltsters historically uh, they would sometimes Breather malt. Re wet it a little bit. But they had to worry about mold issues. So I don't think it was a very common practice, just given the conditions. It may have been done occasionally. 
Look what he just ruined it. <laughs> okay, guys, it is, let's see, six hours into day 14, and I'm going to call it here, and I'm going to put it in the kiln, finally. Um, I've been cutting some of these open, and basically the acrospires, on average, are about four-fifths the length of the grain. Some are the full length and some are a little bit less, like three quarters. Uh, it's got a very pleasant smell right now, sort of like cut grass. Um, and I would say it's a more pleasant smell than the other one. Uh, the other one was a little bit hard to describe, kind of, uh, it's kind of an ashy smell to it, which, uh, you know, wasn't that nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do the same killing schedule as the other batch. I'm going to give it four hours at about uh, 25 degrees with the fan on to start with. And then I'm going to turn the fan off and let it get up to about uh, 35 or, or 40 degrees and uh, dry it out quite low. Okay, gonna see what the weight is at now. It's feeling pretty dry, and you bite into it. Yeah, very dry. Let's see if I can get this out without spilling. So, four pounds, two ounces. That's kind of right where I want it. So, the last batch I said I would kiln at 185 for three hours. I ended up um, going for five hours just to make it a little more friable. So I'm going to do the same with this one. Hey guys, well, I just took this out of the oven. This is the unaerated malt. Kiln the same way as the aerated one, but wow, what a difference. Um, tons of malt flavor from this one and more of a raw grain flavor from the aerated malt. Unfortunately, uh, you're going to have to wait a few weeks before I make some beer out of this so we won't be able to tell the true flavor difference until that's done but I wanted to share this with you guys as soon as possible because I just find that's uh, so interesting that um, there is a difference. So if you've ever wondered how they managed to germinate their malt for so long, well, it's an unaerated steep.